Hello everyone, welcome to the first parents channel and welcome to Mensa. Good evening. And uh, as you can see, we have come up with a new topic today, which is why does my child have fever? Isn't this like a really common topic that every new parent asks uh, themselves that why does my child have fever? So don't worry, parents, we got you covered. We have an expert joining us for the same, um, Dr. Ramya Srinath. She's a pediatrician an enthusiastic and energetic doctor with an MD pediatrics and a vision to provide the best possible care to all children. Looking to educate parents and improve the quality of children's life. Uh, let's hear her expertise on this topic. Hi, Dr. Ramya. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, thank you so much for coming up with this amazing topic that probably every parent asks themselves, every new parent asks themselves that, why does my child have fever? So I have a couple of questions for you regarding the same. So can we jump on to the topic directly? Sure, let's go ahead. Sure, let's go ahead. All right. So my first question to you is that it's a really common question that, you know, the first question that pops up after we seeing this topic would be, what is fever? So can you tell us that what is fever? So first of all, I want to say that fever is not a disease at all. It's only a symptom. So like all symptoms, just like cough and vomiting, fever is due to an illness which could be minor or it could be serious. Okay, so uh, people should not panic or parents should not panic as soon as, you know, someone gets a fever, the baby gets a fever. And fortunately, most fevers in children are due to like infections that are minor and they resolve by themselves. You know, a fever comes in two, three days, it resolves. So most fevers, they are associated with illnesses, could be anywhere. Like doctors say they are low-grade fevers and there are high-grade fevers also. And generally, these fevers last only three to five days. So I want to make it clear that the intensity of fever does not relate to the severity of the illness. For example, if you know the child is only having a fever of 99 continuously for three to five days, it does not mean that the infection is not there at all or it's a very minor infection. Because different infections have different types of fever. So generally, fever is between 38.3 degrees Celsius to around 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, it's actually very important how your child behaves during the fever. If your child is very irritable, if your child is not having anything orally, if the child is lethargic, these all are very important to note down. Otherwise, there are some children who have a fever who after, you know, the fever resolves, they are very active during the afebrile time, which means where there is no fever. And fortunately for uh, children, um, you know, the brains, like, unfortunately for all people, the brain has a particular thermostat, okay? And these keep the untreated fevers below the level of around 41 degrees Celsius, which if it goes above this, it can cause some harm to the brain and some brain damage. But I want all parents to know if your child is less than three months of age, then you should definitely, you know, check with the child's pediatrician first before doing anything. Simply giving paracetamol and subsiding it is not because it's quite uncommon for less than three months old to get a fever. And as a matter of fact, not just till three months, that's just the guidelines that we follow. But any child less than one year of age with no other symptoms of cold, cough or anything, they should try and make sure they consult the pediatrician and figure out what is causing the fever before, you know, giving any medications. Right. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, my next question to you would be, then why do parents worry about a fever? Just like, you know, right now you said that uh, it's not that serious thing if that if the child has like 99 fever for five, four to five days. Then why do parents tend to panic so much? So the thing is, because children are unable to express themselves very easily and adults are able to express themselves, fever comes often as a sign of a disease. Oh, you know, parents start worrying that my child is severely ill. So one thing I always advise all parents is check the like temperature of your child always with a thermometer. Do not just touch the child's head or touch the child's body and say, oh, my child is warm, I'll give off a medication. Please do not do that because knowing what is a degree of fever for your child is very, very important, especially for the doctor who wants to diagnose what is the cause of the fever. So first, I always advise is check your child's temperature in the morning 
and then at the bedtime and four hours somewhere during the day if your child looks ill or appears ill and try to dress your child in you know comfortable clothing and light clothing give a lot of fluid to drink this i mean water and fresh juices i do not mean any packaged juices or ors or anything unless it's advised and your child should have more rest so the thing is when parents should you know think that if the child has a minor illness and develops into a serious illness is when the child appears to be getting sicker okay there are certain symptoms that i'll, I'll list later but uh, this is when the symptoms all start appearing and if your child you know has uh, gone to the hospital got an admitted and still comes back home and still the fever comes again this is all when the parent should worry right and uh, may, may i know that what would be the best area to measure temperature of the child so the best area to measure the temperature of your child is actually under the tongue of the mouth okay because this is the best place to measure but the problem is some thermometers uh will not be too clean will not have been sterilized properly and may be used for multiple people so under the armpit is the best bet and when you tell your doctor also like the child's pediatrician please mention how much was a degree and where you measured it also so that they can calculate accordingly right uh i see zebran has a question we'll try to take it in, at the end of the session zebran uh please uh, wait till the end of the session uh okay dr ramesh so my next question to you is that uh, as an adult whenever i get fever whenever my mom gets fever we we take paracetamols we take medicines right so mm. when do we give medicines for fever to a child okay that's a great question so uh the thing is if the child is less than 3 months old don't give any medication unless it's advised by the doctor okay if your child is more than 3 months of age the best medicine to give is paracetamol okay do not give any other medications unless your child is allergic to paracetamol and this has been diagnosed by the pediatrician child the doctor also may prescribe ibuprofen if the fever is higher but this is only to be done after the doctor prescribes it uh in a lot of countries they give aspirin especially in the western countries the us and all people still have aspirin and drug or any drugs containing aspirin but this is not to be given at all because this can cause something called rays syndrome so definitely please do not give aspirin i know it's not very uh, readily available in india for children but i'm just informing parents you know if they're traveling and all aspirin is given as an over the counter medication for fever so please only stick to paracetamol at the dosage that is prescribed by the child's pediatrician and always give the correct dosage because i see that a lot of parents give the dosage that was prescribed by the doctor earlier during an earlier consultation for example the child hasn't been to the doctor in fa- like a almost over a year because you know child hasn't gotten unwell and they just use the same dosage which it will it will not be according to the weight so for adults you know generally if you are above a 60 kg uh, like if you are above 60 kg the doctor will prescribe you you know paracetamol 650 mg like as a standard routine they won't really check exactly what is your weight unless you know you are above 120 kg then they may prescribe you a higher dosage but for children every single kg every single gram counts so doctors only after checking the um, weight of the child will prescribe the exact um, dosage for paracetamol right mm. and uh, what may be the symptoms associated with fever uh, so you can have children that have fever with rash okay this this can be seen when you know you have um, sometimes chicken pox uh, measles varicella all this can be there when you know the child has a rash there are other things that you know if um, you uh, have uh, sometimes you have a fever with a cold and cough this is very symptomatic of a respiratory infection sometimes there are fevers that are low grade low grade i mean which is less than you know 99 100 around that range uh, degrees of fahrenheit where there are no other symptoms but the child is continuously having fever for more than 5 6 days this could be a sign of urinary infection 
where the child is unable to say right like the child may not be crying and passing urine and it may be asymptomatic other than just the fever so this could be a urinary infection uh, like i said earlier fever is just a symptom it's not indicative of exactly where is the cause and sometimes the uh, doctors really rely on the associated symptoms so whenever you tell the doctor please tell at least a two weeks history to your child's pediatrician so that they understand you know from where it could be a uh, infection uh, that started prior and then led to the fever or it could be a fever then led you know to the other symptoms so it's very important to give the doctor at least a two week history of your child's you know whereabouts have they been going out have they been eating out have they been in contact with anyone with similar symptoms all that information please keep ready so that because whatever information only you tell the doctor and you know and only then the doctor will be able to properly diagnose because it's very difficult children are unable to explain this properly even us as adults we we tend to forget things that are important to tell the doctor so whoever is a primary caregiver it may not be the parents because they are at work but make sure you know they give all the information so that the doctor can make a proper diagnosis right so there can be a lot of issues related like uh, if you have fever there can be many causes behind it so mm-hmm. it's not just cough and cold <laughs> so, yes yes totally sure. so uh, what my next question to is that what should a parent do when they find out that the child has fever and when should we when should they you know call a doctor or either take them to the hospital what is the when when should we you know understand it that what should we have to do can we cure their fever at home or do we have to take them to the doctor or the hospital okay so um the thing is first dress your child in clothing that is comfortable loose clothing uh, warm clothing don't tie tie your you know child up in huge sweaters and comforters and you know try to make them sweat it out just make sure they're in breathable comfortable clothing that is one of the most important things i've seen that parents don't do instead they cover up their child thinking that that will you know cause the fever to somehow you know get suppressed or something this actually is very uncomfortable and will make the child much more irritable than they actually are that is one second of all uh, what i fi- find found out is parents are not sure when to come to the emergency so let me just tell you these are the points that really it should not get this severe but if it does get severe they should immediately come to an emergency department that there is a pediatrician available in so if your child is difficult to awaken in the sense they are very lethargic they are much sleepier they are sleeping for longer hours and otherwise the baby child should be you know very easily awakened they should be able to interact with you be quite alert and you know active during their awake times and if they are difficult to awaken they should go to the emergency if you know the child is too weak to move too weak to stand too weak to eat then they should go if there are any uh, type of confusion they are answering questions deliriously of course this is for more of an elder child but if they are not answering questions properly the, the parent should go to the emergency if there is any difficulty breathing excessive cough and cold that is just not subsiding if the child is a small child and cries constantly even after you try to feed the child you know with milk or um with the breast milk formula milk or any other type of milk and you just can't settle the child if the you know skin color is becoming very pale any bruises are developing over the body if there is any history of any seizures after the fever onset and uh, if the you know uh, of course i mentioned about urinary infection if the child is crying excessively when they're going to the loo or you know foul smearing urine with a high like urinary infection that the child is just unable to you know uh, decrease like it's the child is unable to stop crying after going to the bathroom all these are symptoms and you should go to the emergency department and meet with the doctor right and i had one personal question that you know mm-hmm. uh, for me uh, whenever i get fever uh, a, a cold water sponge bath it it really helps me but it doesn't work for my mom so is it different for babies like can we uh, give them a sponge bath a wa- cold water sponge bath bath whenever they have fever 
So this is a very uh, good question, Barak, and thanks for asking that. So we don't advise a cold water sponge bath. Instead, you take a cotton like towel, dip it in room temperature water, squeeze out the water, and pat it over the child's body, and keep doing this until you know the water becomes a little warm, and then dump that water and do it again. A lot of people, uh, you know, dip this towel in ice cold freezing water. and uh, do it for the child and that's, that is not um, advised at all because the sudden change in temperature is not good for the child and actually can cause an adverse uh, reaction to the child's body so it should just be room temperature water squeezed out and this is called tepid sponging so this should be done this can be done in between the fever interval to decrease the fever but uh, as i said before paracetamol is the best choice and you have to give it some time you have to give it one hour to subside right and i remember my mom giving me a dose of paracetamol by crushing the tablet so maybe mm-hmm. um, is it like it does the so same effect it is as difficult no you get a lot of liquid syrups now so syrups are advised for children who can't consume any tablets the problem with crushing tablets is uh, because half of it will just be at the bottom of the what do you say bottom of the spoon or bottom of the cup in whichever it was crushed one second of all you are not giving the correct dosage for example now how can you cut the 650 mg tablet perfectly in half to get you know 325 you're giving more or you're giving less it's okay if it is you know a big child but if you're dealing with children under 5 years of age who won't be you know at that correct weight it's very dangerous at the uh, you know in uh, one period you cannot given overdose for any child and you can't underdose also for the child so there are several liquid syrups available in the market uh, there is you know like uh, paracetamol 100 mg that which is present in 1 ml there is a 125 mg present in 5 ml there is 250 mg present in 5 ml there are even 325 mg tablets that are available for slightly older children so there are several uh, tablets that are available which are not so big also but at the same time yes crushing is not advised unless there is no liquid form of the tablet and it has to be given immediately and this should be done only in a hospital setup where you know the nurse or the doctor does it and they will give it to you and make sure you know the entirety is consumed because they will be able to measure exactly how much is um, you know broken and how much to give all right okay so these were all the questions that i had let's take zibran's question now so he has a question that for me whenever fever hits me up i always suffer pain in the throat is there something i can do for relief uh the best thing to do zibran is like to do like gargling either you can do it with salt water you can do it with warm water don't do it with hot water but the thing is uh, this may just be because your immunity is slightly less and you may just you know uh, immediately have a sore throat and everything that is causing you to have this fever it's not the fever that is causing the sore throat uh, it's likely the sore throat is what is causing the fever uh hi zibran hope we answered your question i hope our uh, dr ramya's answer was helpful to you so thank you so much doctor for joining us today it was a very informative question i hope that a lot of parents had benefited from it and hope we have answered the question that why does my child have fever sure thanks so much for having me on the first parents page thank you for watching For more such videos do like share and subscribe to the first parents